In this video, we're in the multiple linear regression setting, and we're going to look at partial residual plots. Now, as a reminder, the model is y is equal to x beta plus some error, and we're assuming that the mean of the error terms are zero, and it has a covariance matrix of sigma squared i. Now, the um, goal here is to investigate each regressor variable and whether we should conduct a power transform on it or leave it as is. You know, should we square the jth component, you know, jth regressor, take the square root of it to make it, you know, fit the model assumptions better. And what, what they do is they regress Y on to all the regressors except for J, and then they regress J onto all the regressors and then they look at the residuals from each of those regressions and regress them onto each other. Um, well, let's, we'll get into that detail. First, let's develop some notation. X minus J is the design matrix with the jth regressor removed. So think of it as the jth column of this has been taken out. Here is the residuals, so E of YX is the residuals obtained from regressing Y on to all the X's, all the regressors. Here are the residuals obtained from regressing Y on to the, all the regressors except for the Jth regressor. And this is regressing the Jth regressor onto all the other regressor variables. Okay, so the partial residual plot looks at the residuals from regressing Y onto all the regressors except for J, and then regressing J onto all the other regressors. So what this is doing is it's removing the relationship between all the other regressors except for J, because it's not there, and what, what's extra is just sort of Y and the relationship of J. You know, these, these effects are being removed. And here, we're regressing J onto all the other regressors. We're, we're taking out the effects of these other regressors on J. So now when we regress these two, it's like the pure relationship between X, J, and Y. That's sort of the idea. So these plots should depict a linear relationship to the origin with a slope of beta J. And that's kind of cool in itself. Um, so in the original model, we develop least squares estimates for beta, and the jth component is the is beta j hat. It's the least squares estimate of the regressor coefficient in front of the jth regressor, right? So by doing both of these, you know, finding these residuals and regressing them onto each other, it creates a slope of beta j. Now that's in theory, and, and we'll justify it in just a second, but in practice does regressing these re residuals onto each other produce the least, you know, a slope of the least squares estimate for beta j? And it does, but, and that's all actually a cool proof that we'll do on pages two and three. Um, so first let's justify theoretically that regressing these should produce a line through the origin with slope beta j. So let's let h minus j be the projection matrix under the column space of all the x's minus the jth component. And I would point you to previous video 25 in this playlist. The playlist is generalized linear models regression. And the 25th video really delves into this quite a bit. So here's our original model. And then we're going to separate j the jth component from the rest of these regressors. That's what we do here. So this is a vector and this is a matrix, but so then we have to separate the beta. So when we do that multiplication, you know, that it, it works out. So this is a unknown parameter and this is a vector of unknown parameters. So when we do that multiplication, we get this. Now let's pre-multiply pre both sides times I minus the H minus J, the hat matrix derived by all the columns except for J. So here we, we pre-multiply, and we pre-multiply this, pre-multiply that, pre-multiply this. Now, from previous video 49, where we look at residuals 
in, in residuals in matrix form. This resembles that quite a bit. So this is, this piece here are the residuals of regressing Y onto all the X's except for the Jth column. This one, now the beta parameter is separate. This is regressing the residuals from regressing XJ onto all the other regressors, you know, X minus J. This will just reparameterize as epsilon star. But this one here, X minus J times H minus J, the hat matrix, you get X back. And then X times I, you get X. So X minus X is zero. So this drops out. And that's what we see on this page. So these are the residuals, zero residuals and air. And then if you remove that, you know, carry this down, this is it. So um, if you take this away, that's a line through the origin with slope beta j. And the epsilon says that the data, you know, is sprinkled around that line. But it's, a, on, you know, the, on average, or the model is the line with beta j. So in theory, finding these residuals and then regressing them on each other should produce a plot with slope beta j. Now, when we do that, when we conduct a plot, and if it's not aligned through the origin with this slope, something happened. So sometimes, you know, it, it may start to curve. And that says, whoa, the XJ should have a power transform of some sort. Maybe it should be squared or, or, or square rooted or cubed or, you know. So what I just said is if it's not linear, it may imply a power transformation on the Jth component is needed. However, these plots don't really show us what that power transformation uh, should be, just that one is needed. And so, now in theory, this works great, but does it work in practice? So if we, you know, these are the theoretical residuals, theoretical residuals, the unknown beta parameters, I mean, it works out great. But what if we do this in practice. So we use the data to find, you know, re regress these residuals onto these. So which, which is what this says. Um, take these, and so we create, um, instead of calling it beta zero and beta one, like we did in the original model, we're just gonna call it gamma to sort of emphasize that they're a little bit different. Now, instead of carrying all this clunky notation, we'll just call these residuals one and these residuals two. And now we need to find this regression. Well, in previous video two, where we, previous video two in this playlist, uh, generalized linear models regression, we showed what the least squares estimates for uh, gamma one and gamma zero are. And the notation, the least squares estimate for gamma one, in previous video two, we called it SXY, where um, that was this sum. Now, here, since x is x2, we got to put x or e2, and y is e1. Instead of xy, we put those. But it's this sum, right? Now this is the mean of the, you know, these residuals. But by default, we forced the sum of the residuals to be zero. So this is zero component. So this is the product of each component added together, which is the same as vector products. We take the vector of these residuals and, and dot product or vector product with E, E1. Now, uh, S, E2, E2, that's this piece. Now, in previous video two, we called it S, X, X, which is like the sum of the X squareds, you know. But in, the, in here, since we're using E2 instead of X, it's this. But remember the uh, mean of the residuals is zero. So this is just uh, the sum of the component squared, which is the same as this vector product. So the least squares estimate for gamma one is this number here. Okay. Now the least squares estimate for gamma zero would be, you know, in, in previous video two, we called this uh, y bar. So it's the mean of the y's minus uh, you know, the least squares estimate for gamma one, or in previous video two, we called it a beta one, and this was X bar. But the mean of the set of residuals, this is zero and this is zero. 
So that says that gamma of zero is zero. That's the least squares estimate. So now what we need to show is that the least squares estimate for gamma one is actually the least squares estimate for beta j hat. Now th remember, this is the, the uh, jth component of this vector of least squares estimates. And to me, that's kind of mind boggling. So think about what we're doing. We're taking residuals from two different regressions, regressing them onto each other, and we're saying the least squares estimate for that parameter, you know, the slope parameter, is the same as if we started with the original model and just found the least squares estimate of beta j. Okay? And to me, that gives a whole, if this is true, which it is, it gives a whole new meaning of that beta parameter, the least squares estimate of it. So what, and what it would mean is that really beta j represents the relationship between y and xj with all the other variables removed, you know, the contributions or, you know, held constant or fixed, which is, you know, that's kind of a neat way to think about it. So here in the X design matrix, we want to separate out the jth column. And so this is, a, this is a vector, a column, and this is a matrix of all the other regressors. And then this is a number, and this is a vector. So when we do that multiplication, it makes sense. Now, we know what the least squares estimate of beta is. It's, it's X transpose X inverse, X transpose Y. We've done this so much in all the other 60 plus videos before this one. That's what it is. But let's substitute the, this form in for X. So this is X transpose, right? And this is X, and we have the inverse, and then that's X transpose Y, okay? And the next page, um, we're going to transpose this, and we're going to do this matrix product. So we did the matrix product, and we have inverse, and then we took the transpose, right? But that, that's easy, and we have Y. Now what happens next is this is a two-by-two two partitioned matrix. Really, it's not a two-by-two two matrix, but we're partial in it to look, partial in it to look like that. And I have a video called the inverse of partition matrices. So there's a definite form for this. And this result, we're just going to call A, B, C, D, whatever it is. And you'll see why in a second. Now here we take the Y in, we get this. Now, remember that um, we're finding the least squares estimate, right? So this is the beta hat. So what we're doing is this product is beta hat, okay? So now let's take that product. So you take AB times this, and we get that. And then we take CD times this, and we get this. And remember, this is beta hat, but this one is the jth component of that vector, and this is all the other beta vectors. So this right here is beta J hat, and this is what we're saying is equal to gamma one hat slope of that regression of residuals onto the residuals. So let's look at that. So we take this beta j, so this is a number, and it's equal to this based upon what we've done. But now we have to fill in this crazy inverse. And if you watch this video, it, it makes perfect sense. And, and actually I derive it, which is kind of a fun derivation to have in your mathematical tool bag anyway. So what we do, so this are these two steps. Now notice here, we have Y, we have X minus J transpose. Now the C is everything else, including that negative, okay? And then it's plus, and then over here we have the Y, and we have XJ, and then everything else is D, but you know, based upon this uh, inverse of a partition matrix. So now let's start simplifying this. So here we can left factor out an xj, we can right factor out an xj, and that's what this is. So what's left is the identity, and then this right here is the hat matrix without the jth component. We can write it like that. So the inverse still is stick, sticks around. Um, this is xj transpose. 
this is the hat matrix without the jth component and we have y and we do something similar here left factor out of xj right factor out of xj and what's left is this and then you know we have this and that now we have the same thing common so let's factor it out and that's what this is so what's left over we write this one first and then the minus this we have this for here we left factor out of xj and we right factor out of y and since this is a number right this is a vector so it's a one by you know something vector and this is something by one and when you take the inverse of a number it's really just divide by so we take this and move the denominator and up here we left factored out of xj and we right factored out of y and we get this now this is what's called an idempotent symmetric matrix so we can we can square it and we get this back so let's do that but when we square it kind of put one of them with this x and one of them with this y and that transpose we take into it so that's what we get here so one of them went here and, and one of them went there and we do the same thing down here but remember this is a residual. This is the matrix form of a residual of regressing xj onto x minus j. And that's what we're calling E2. And this is, this is E1, and this was E2, and this was E2. So this is equal to this, but that's exactly what we call the least squares estimate for gamma 1. So in practice, it does work also. If we regress those two... Uh, if we plot those two residuals against each other, it should be have slope beta one or beta j hat, and it should be linear through the origin. If it's not, then it's a model violation, and that's why we do partial uh, uh, residual plots. Okay, so um, to, we're going to end it here, but there are definitely more diagnostic plots to consider, and these are going to be on your own. You definitely want to regress the full residuals against the fitted values. Um, regressing the full residuals against each XI can be useful, but the more regressors you have, in my personal opinion, it's, in, it's not very helpful. Others may argue against that, and I'm okay with that. Uh, two more, the components plus residuals, augmented partial residual plots, both to help. You know, there can be problems with the partial residual plot and, and, and these two kind of highlight, potent, you, know, you know, just supplement that better. And also QQ plots, Ranga plots on the residuals. These are normal probability plots. Oh, and actually I have a video called QQ plots versus Ranga plots, uh, delineating what the difference is. And you should do that on the residuals to see if, if they follow the normal distribution. Okay, well that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.